Hello and welcome back to my channel. I recently made this Lucky Charms themed cake for St. Patrick's Day this year and found that creating all the marshmallow shapes out of fondant was actually really easy and quick. I'm starting with my easy marshmallow fondant recipe which you can find on my website and on my channel here and use Chef Master liquid gels to color each piece pastel colors to match the marshmallow colors. I'm using the Lucky Charms fondant cutter set from my shop which has all the shapes for the cereal marshmallows. I rolled out my fondant a little bit thicker than I normally would just to give it a little more 3D marshmallow appearance. For the shapes that have more than one color like the pot of gold here, I rolled the two pieces of fondant next to each other out together and just helped them attach a little better with a little brush of water in between. Then position the pot of gold just like this so you get both colors where they're supposed to be. For the rainbow, which has three colors, I roughly position them in the right places and then thin them out just a little bit by rolling them further. Again, brush the seams with a little water to keep them in place and then cut out the rainbow. The leprechaun hat has a shamrock in the middle, so I made four small balls of a deeper green fondant and rolled out some more pastel green fondant. Then I placed the four small balls right in the center with a little bit of water and lightly smushed them with my finger before rolling them out so they'd be flat against the green. Then I could just make sure my cutter was positioned so the shamrock was in the middle. The shooting star has a yellow star with a yellow tail sandwiched between two orange tails. I wanted to be able to cut this all in one piece so here is how I position the fondant pieces to be able to do that. Roll it out to flatten it and attack with a little bit of water. It worked really well. Lastly is the unicorn. The unicorn head is white and the mane and the horn are a marbled pink and blue together. So I needed some pink and blue together just until it was marbled, not mixed together. I rolled this out as well as some white fondant and then I used the cutter to cut out the horn and the mane from the pink and blue fondant and then the entire piece from the white fondant. Cut off the horn and the mane from the white piece and then you have a little puzzle that easily fits together just like this. Make sure to allow these to dry at least overnight. This part is optional but I wanted a few of them to stick out from the top of the cake so I used some food safe floral wire and some fresh white fondant and just attached a few of them with a little brush of water. Again, let this dry entirely. And then we'll make our spoon because it's a cereal cake, of course. I am using the spoon cutter from my shop with some light gray fondant. And then in order to give it its 3D spoon shape, I'm going to dry it over another spoon. This is actually a children's spoon from a set my kids have with plenty of cornstarch um, at least overnight. And here's how it looks when it's dry. I'll brush off the cornstarch and then I'm gonna use some silver luster dust to brush all over it to make it look metallic. I wanted to make this cake fairly tall in order to fit all the fondant pieces I made. These are some of my vanilla and chocolate cake layers along with my vanilla buttercream recipe. You can find all my recipes on my website at customcakesandcupcakes.com. For the sake of time, I didn't want to spend too much time on the frosting and stacking of the cake as I do also have a more in-depth tutorial on all my tips and tricks for frosting smooth buttercream cakes. I'll make sure to link that video here and if you'd also like a more in-depth tutorial on frosting and smoothing a taller cake like this one, I'm happy to put that together as well. I chose white for the background of this cake um, because it's the color of milk in your cereal and also because I wanted the fondant pieces to pop out. I also decided to give this cake a glitter finish. I'm using Quartz Edible Luxe Glitter Dust by Sweets and Treats Boutique. You can brush it all over a cold, very well chilled buttercream cake and it gives a beautiful shine. 
I also just recently posted my white chocolate ganache drip recipe as well as how to get a very opaque and bright pearly white color. Check that video out, I'll link that here as well. We're gonna drip it all over the top just to look like some spilled milk in your cereal bowl. I also chose to give this cake a spiral border with a 1M tip on the very top to help make some more height for more space for the fondant pieces. It also gives a nice finished look too. Again, this is my vanilla buttercream frosting and I have colored it with Chef Master White and a little tiny bit of violet as well to really whiten it up. Squeeze with medium pressure to anchor the buttercream to the cake, then while maintaining pressure spiral around, focusing on laying each new coil over the last. If you need to pause to readjust your grip or refill your bag, pull the little tail in toward the center of the cake and then just start piping right back on top of it to cover it up. And then since this was a St. Patrick's Day themed cake, I added some bright green sprinkles here. This mix is called So Jaded by Sweets and Treats Boutique and it coordinated very well with the fondant pieces. Now it's time to add all of our fondant pieces that look like the marshmallows from the cereal. The pieces with the wire are the ones I added first. I wanted it to look like just a big cascade of them down the front of the cake. I also wanted to make sure I had enough space so you could see them all at once just from one cake angle. To attach them to the front of the cake, just a little blob of fresh buttercream works great. I hope you didn't forget about the spoon. I was able to stick that spoon right into the border and it looked great. And finally, I finished up with a few sprinkles around the fondant pieces I made. I'm using the Sprinkle Pen by Sweet Elizabeth Cake. I really like using this tool. It works great to efficiently and meticulously place sprinkles where you'd like them. You can use my code ErinCakes10 for a discount on your order at Sweet Elizabeth Cake and I will link that in my description as well. And here it is all finished. Which marshmallow fondant piece is your favorite? Thank you so much for watching and subscribing. I had a lot of fun with this cake. Let me know if you have any questions.